Good morning, my name is Jeffrey Litvak. I'm the Chief Digital Officer of ALM. I'm glad everyone was able to make it this morning to the Blogger <laughs> Breakfast. Um, we're gonna uh, take a little moment now just to uh, have a short little panel and presentation and talk a little bit about blogging, some of the challenges uh, for attorneys and opportunities as well, uh, from cloud computing to uh, mobile uh, in 2014. So first I'm gonna hand over to uh, Loretta, who's gonna uh, introduce the panel. And Hi, Bob. Yes. Hello, good morning. My name is Loretta Rupert. I'm Senior Director of Community with LexisNexis Business of Law. Welcome to the Legal Tech New York 2014 Bloggers Breakfast, sponsored by LexisNexis for a Manager, an easy online practice management. Today's a big day and we're not going to let this weather get us down, even though we're starting to hear a lot of really horror stories out there. Uh, at Legal Tech, we're celebrating the relaunch of uh, the new LexisNexis for a Manager which was rebuilt uh, from the ground up for solo and small law firm attorneys. And this year, we have a prediction based off a cloud survey we recently did, and then also based off of some of the technology um, surveys that have been done by the ABA in 2013, that this is not only going to be the year of the cloud, but we also believe it's gonna be, we're declaring it the year of the independent attorney. Um, so as you'll see here, um, we have a new brand uh, for the LexisNexis um, for manager, which is the power of independence. And we'd like you to take this very powerful declaration that resonates this for solo and small law firm attorneys um, in the world that we live in today. But there's so much more to share. Um, we also welcome you to an educational track that we're sponsoring. Um, it's going to be in the Sutton North Room, uh, Evolution of Lawyering. There's three different sessions today. A small panel of independent attorneys talking about uh, solo success and the real world insights. Uh, the second one's going to be a moot court appellate style debate, which is going to be pretty fun. Um, that's going to be based off the total cost of ownership, premise versus cloud. We've got some really great people on that uh, particular panel. And then the last one is the ever, uh, the ever changing landscape of client engagement and uh, expectations, where there's a team of experts who's going to be discussing the trends and engagement with clients using social platforms, online document uh, file retrieval and sharing uh, applications, uh, tablets to get the work done and stay connected in online practice management. Uh, the sessions, again, will be held in the Sutton North Room. And then finally, um, on the tables, you'll find a couple of things. First, you'll find uh, the final report of the cloud survey that we recently released, and we did a, a campaign throughout um, January on. And then this other one here is for you. So this is actually an offer for you to provide your readership. Uh, it's a 20% it's a discount off of LexisNexis for Manager if they sign up by February 20th. And this offer is not public, so this is only for you to share with your readership. And we appreciate uh, you providing us with this opportunity to, um, to share this with you this morning. So please make sure that you come by and visit us at the booth, um, and we'll go ahead and get started. Yeah? <laughs> So, uh, so good morning again. Thank you all for showing up with the uh, wonderful weather outside. We're not going to spend a lot of time um, with this uh, panel, but we wanted to get into a couple of issues around blogging and challenges and opportunities for the legal industry. A little tight up here, but uh, we'll, we'll okay. fit. A close family. Um, so I thought I'd start by letting each of the uh, individual panelists here introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about uh, the blogs that they're working for and what they do. So, uh, Vivi, if you'd like to go first. Sure. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay, terrific. Hi, I'm Vivia Chen. I'm the blogger behind The Careerist. And as the title of that blog indicates, I write about careers, but I take a very, very broad interpretation of what careers might entail. It could mean everything from you know advice on how to interview to, uh, to, to the sort of dynamics of how um, love, marriage, and sex might uh, intersect with your career. So I think it's a fun blog, uh, and I started this about four years ago. Uh, just by way of personal background, I am a lawyer. I have served my time in big law, uh, so I know a little bit about the culture and what that entails. Um, and I just hope that all of you enjoy it and that it's a fun read for all of you. Thank you. And uh, my name is Bob Ambrogi. I write a blog called Law Sites, where I cover uh, the web and legal technology, uh, not love, sex, and, and marriage at all. <laughs> uh, and uh, I also uh, 
uh, I, I've been doing that blog since like 2002 or 2003, a long time. Uh, and I also contribute to an e-discovery blog called the Catalyst e-discovery search blog. Uh, and uh, write about e-discovery there. And then I do a, uh, a podcast uh, called Lawyer Lawyer, part of the Legal Talk Network, uh, which is, uh, we like to say, the longest running legal podcast. We've been going for eight years or something with that, so. Yeah, Bob goes, when did you do your first thing back in the 90s when you started doing Law on the Net? <laughs> <laughs> before there was, before Bill Clinton invented the internet, or yeah. Al Gore, Al Gore. Al Gore invented the internet. Okay. Um, my name is Kevin O'Keefe. Um, I blog uh, at Real Lawyers Have Blogs, and I also have a company um, that I try and stay the heck out of the way of the people. We have about 35 folks back in Seattle and about 8,000 lawyers from around the world that blog uh, on the LexBlog network on individual blogs and about 1,000 blogs uh, today, and it continues to grow. And uh, it's an honor to be here. Thanks much, Jeff. And my name is Loretta Rupert, and we have a blog called Business of Law Blog. It's with LexisNexis, where we um, focus on those uh, matters of practice, we call it. That's actually another blog that we just merged, recently merged in with it, of those things that actually impact um, law firms. So I thought I'd uh, start the first question off picking up on Loretta's theme a little bit earlier, which is around the idea of cloud and where is cloud computing falling out for legal industry? Is this the year, finally, 2014, where cloud computing is going to really play out for lawyers? I thought I'd ask Bob and, and Kevin first that question. Uh, well, I actually uh, think 2013 might have been the year mm -hmm. in which the cloud finally came into its own. I, I, I mean, I think it's going to continue to come into its own, but I think the surveys uh, show, the, the, the survey that LexisNexis just did shows that uh, I think it's roughly 40% of small firm lawyers now say they're using the cloud. Uh, I'd venture a guess that it's even more than that because I think a lot of them don't even know they're using the cloud. Right. Uh, and you know, the ethics opinions, I think we're now up to 18 states that have issued ethics opinions saying that it's ethical for lawyers to use the cloud provided they exercise a certain degree of due diligence in uh, vetting the providers that they're using. Uh, there has not ever, there has not been a single state that said it's not ethical to use the cloud. Every state that's looked at this has said it's okay. Uh, so I think the momentum is, is clear that we're, that's where we're headed. There's still concern about security. Uh, and again, I think it's kind of misplaced concern because I think a lot of the lawyers who are concerned about the security of the cloud are probably doing far less to protect the security of their own offices than any cloud provider is doing out there. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think 2014 will continue the momentum that started already. Kevin, what do you think from a Lex blog perspective and your own perspective? Yeah, I mean, just an external perspective, I, you know, I think it's like saying, are we going to breathe in 2014? You know, <laughs> of course, the cloud's going to be used. It's been used for years. You know, lawyers use it to, you know, if they use Gmail, that's a cloud. If they're using any type of service, it's a cloud. If you take a picture, it backs up, you know, to Google Plus, that's the cloud. Um, it's certainly far safer to use a cloud than to sit there with a server in your office or to have it in a box someplace where you have a local college kid or tech kid going down and working in the, in the box. So. You know, from a <clears throat> standpoint when, you know, I founded LexBlog back in 2003, you know, it was, it was a thought, you know, our law firm's going to pause as they begin to publish and share information uh, in an environment where we're going to provide them an environment. And heck, I mean, I provided that thing on, a, on some boxes back in Michigan where I paid $6 a month for each blog, you know, for MLaw 100 firms because I didn't want to pay $5 a month. I thought that was too cheap. Uh, so, it, but people get by and none of the firms pause for a minute. Now, that was external information versus uh, internal, but I, you know, I just think it's a, you have tires in your car, you're in the cloud. I mean, it's just, so it, it's holding people back today or? No, I don't think so. I, you know, but I'm not in, in uh, you know, I'm not a chief information officer. I'm not a security officer inside of a uh, major law firm and what their concerns are. But, you know, I think for the typical lawyer, I think Bob's right, most of them wouldn't know that they're on the cloud um, when, they, when they are, especially when you're into smaller, medium-sized firm. It'd be too expensive to try to do your own thing as far as practice management, not being in the cloud. Chris, do you want to chime in here and introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, thank you. Christopher Anderson uh, with LexisNexis as well, um, and I could contribute to the blog that Loretta spoke about. Um, from the bottom up, I mean, I think the comments of Bob uh, were, are, are spot on um, from where the bars are and everything else, but from the bottom up also the conversation on the street uh, this year really has shifted up through, uh, really into 2013, the conversation was still, is it safe, is it ethical, can I do this? And with all these bar uh, associations that have given rulings, the conversation from small, lawyer, uh, from small firm lawyers uh, has started to become how 
and when and what rather than can I? Um, and then so I, I really do feel the tide shift. So if the cloud's here, then what, what's next? What else, what else are we looking at from a technology perspective or otherwise? What are some of the really big challenges, rather from a blogging perspective for law firms in 2014? What do you think, Bob? Start in terms of blogging? In terms of blogging or, or just challenges for a law firm? What's the biggest well, challenge they're going to see? Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, again, it's going to depend on the size of law firm we're talking about. I think the, the, the fact of the cloud and the fact of uh, mobile devices means that for large law firms, the, the challenge is maintaining security, it's maintaining the uh, uh, control over the culture of bring your own device and use your own platform. Uh, some of the firms are dealing with that well, some are not. Uh, you know, for, for uh, smaller firms, I think it's really just getting a handle around uh, their comfort level with the cloud. Uh, again, I, you know, this, this survey suggests that, that security continues to be a big concern there. Uh, I think when, if, if you look into it, if you understand it, uh, it doesn't have to be a concern and it shouldn't be a concern. So let's turn a little bit. Uh what do you think in terms of blogging? What's, what's the biggest challenges you had for blogging in 2014 or, and or how have things changed since you first started blogging? Personally, uh, I think that, you know, in, in, it's kind of ironic. Uh, when I first started the blog, I thought, how, how the hell am I going to come up with a new topic every day? <laughs> and, you know, and, and part of the, sort of getting into the rhythm of the blog is, is, you know, challenging at first, especially for somebody who came from a background of print journalism. You know, where you're used to doing eight drafts, nine drafts, and being edited to death, and all of a sudden, you know, you have to sort of trust your instincts and voice your opinions very quickly. So that was the hard part, is the tone and also the content. Over time, ironically, I found it to be easier, because once you get into that groove, you're sort of used to channeling, you know, whatever hits you for the day. Uh, so for me personally, I think um, what's tough is keeping it fresh. You know, it's important to maintain your tone. I think people come to blogs, particularly my blog, because it has a very personal voice. People think I speak directly to them, and I think that's important to maintain. On the other hand, you want to make sure that it's fresh and that you keep surprising them. Bob, do you, um, do you look at traffic a lot to your blogs? How do you use technology with your blog in general? You know, are you adapting some of the new, you know, newer stat statistics? How do you really know what, if you're hitting, hitting home to the audience? I don't really look. I mean, I'll look generally just to see which post is getting more interest or less interest. And uh, the one thing I've learned from that is you can never predict which posts are going to get the more, more interest or less interest. Uh, uh, the weirdest little things, I'll, I'll just throw up something because I have no time to write a serious post that day and that'll like take off and go viral, so I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's an interesting time for blogging just because of what, what we've been seeing happening with blogs moving. Uh, you know, you might have seen an announcement recently, the Volok conspiracy is now moved to the Washington Post, is it? To the Washington Post and is going to be behind the paywall of the Washington Post. We have SCOTUS blog becoming owned by Bloomberg or sponsored by Bloomberg. Uh, you know, I think those are those are the exceptions. I don't think that's going to go start spreading like wildfire. But uh, you, you keep hearing reports that blogging is dead, and, and I and I know uh, from reading Kevin's blog that it's not dead because <laughs> uh, he keeps telling us that. <laughs> Kevin, what about you? You know, how, what are you telling the bloggers that work for the uh, like Blog Network, or what, you, what are you doing yourself in terms of ensuring that they well, how to write, how to make sure they position themselves right and drive audiences? Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's people really don't understand what blogging, you know, was and still is. It's a conversation. <clears throat> it's not about content. And the most important thing is listening. So, I mean, I met Bob Ambrosi by listening to what he was writing and referencing what he said. So a blog post is about <clears throat> you begin to write when the silence has ended on the other side. How many people here use, like, Feedly or Zite or Flipboard? I mean, because it, you, you can't... You can't participate in the blogosphere unless you're listening to the conversation because what are you going to do? Just going to shout out information um, and hope that people see it. So the way that I'm not looking at traffic I never have, um, I look at who I get to meet strategically. So if I'm listening to certain conversations, listening to certain companies, 
I reference them and they, they start to see me and I, and I get to meet them. So I think the biggest challenge though for firms <clears throat> is to be a social law firm. And so they're adding on social media people and that's like taking a step backwards. So there's a good article in Harvard Business Review by Clara Shee, who's 29 years old. She's on the board at Starbucks. Um, she replaced, um, the, I can't think of the Sheryl Sandberg that went down to Facebook, to this at Facebook. Um, but she writes about the fact that this year we're going to move into having social enterprises and social means that the individuals will blog, the individuals will use social. So at LexisNexis is the CEO of LexisNexis engaging, um, our inline management people engaging. It's not a social media manager or somebody doing that for them, but they can't build relationships with people um, and build trust with the outside world. So I think that's a, a challenge. Last night, I'll just uh, share this one thing and then just shut up. But it was top five law firm last night. <clears throat> they were talking, they came up to me and they said, Do you, are you aware of software where somebody could put information up there and then it could be reviewed by general counsel? And I said, well, what, why would you do that? Well, because everything's got to be reviewed by general counsel before it goes out. And I looked at them and I said, isn't that terribly demoralizing for the for the lawyers? And they go, oh yeah, it really is. And I'm, th <laughs> you know, I, and I'm thinking that really does wonders for lateral hires and recruits. You know, when one, one spouse is at that firm and they're saying everything that I say has to be reviewed by in-house in -house counsel. So as soon as people are talking about things, I'm not allowed to talk. The outside world is. I can't even share an article at LinkedIn without them knowing that I'm going to share it. I can't blog about that issue. Where another lawyer in another place is out there mixing it up very much like a cocktail party or a networking event. So those are that's going to be the tension that goes on. And those firms that are social are going to do dramatically better than those that aren't financially. I thought I'd close the panel with one last question. What piece of advice would you give to bloggers today in terms of how to be successful in the legal blogosphere? Chris, we'll start with you. <laughs> Keep it real. Um, I mean, the, the, for, for law firms, I think to the point, you know, having it covered by general counsel and, and coming out with the politically and, and functionally correct statement every time is not the way to go, right? To, to speak from, from the heart and to keep, it, to keep the blog post personal uh, is the way to keep them uh, relevant. So that would be what I would say. Vivian? Well, I think, it's, I think it's tough, frankly, for lawyers to blog. Uh, because I get submissions all the time from you know lawyers who want to write, and maybe they have a blog on the side that they uh, send me the link to, and I can tell you most of the time they're lame. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and the reason for that is that lawyers are cautious. Uh, they're all you know worry about all the liabilities they could run into and so forth. And particularly if they're part of a large firm, you know, where you talk about this or the censorship that goes on, that's a real problem. I think where you see lawyers blogging a bit more successfully are the ones who are either at smaller firms who have a niche practice or they or, or they're head of a you know a larger enterprise, but they have a lot of autonomy. Because blogging ultimately is about autonomy. It's about controlling your voice and getting it out there. And the successful blogger will be somebody who can you know, carve out that personality, carve out that space, and really connect with people because he or she is the real thing. Kevin? Yeah, I think it's throwing your heart over the bar you know, and letting your body follow. So you've got to be passionate about what you do. And I think it can come from a solo practitioner to the largest firm in the world. You know, so if I'm talking about that firm last night that is more inhibited in their approach, there's, you know, if I look at Baker and McKenzie, they got into blogging because, you know, a lawyer in their Toronto office threw her heart over the bar and followed and blogged about employment issues and human rights. And she's a rock star. She's a rock star. She led that firm into social because they were, you know, they, were, they didn't get in her way. They empowered her to do the right thing. So I always tell lawyers, get out the magic wand. It's time to do the type of work you want to do for the type of clients you want to do. You're not doing it today, why don't you do it within two years? Because the other people aren't going to take that initiative that you are. And there's no better way to get known and to build relationships than get on the net and blog. Uh, the only thing I would, I mean, I, I, 
passionate may be too strong a word for me. I mean, you, you, it, not, you can't always be passionate about admiralty law or whatever you're, you're bl blogging about. They but it's, 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 well, some of them are. And that's great if you can be. But you do want to be very interested in it. You do want to really love the topic that you're writing about. Because like Vivi was saying earlier, you've got to get something about this topic on a regular basis. And it can, it can really turn into a routine if, you don't, if you're not personally interested in what you're writing about. Uh, so passion, yeah, that would be great if you can get it. But get as close to passion as you can. Pick a topic you're really interested in, you really want to write about. And if I could just add one more thing, it's also kind of effective to go off topic sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that's the way to really capture people's attention. Because, you know, if all I did was write about careers and, you know, you know what you should put in your 401k plan, I can tell you nobody would be reading it. But if you inject something that's a little, perhaps a little personal, a little controversial, certainly provocative, you're going to get a lot more mileage. Well, again, the panels will be around. I'm going to uh, turn it over back to eating and socializing. That's what it's really about today. I want to thank again, once again, uh, Lexus Next Group for sponsoring this uh, breakfast this morning. Thank, thank you. you.